watched this central figure, Amanda Knox, choosing to stay away. The court couldn't compel her to attend this hearing in Florence, and she's chosen to stay at home in Seattle, where she gives interview after interview in which she insists on her innocence. She says that she's been through more than enough already as an innocent woman, she would argue, spending four years in jail here in Italy, not prepared to come back and uh, take her chances again with Italian justice. Her co-accused, her former lover, Raffaele Selecito, also absent from the hearing today, but we expect him to uh, begin to appear as the uh, process moves on through October. And as the hearing got underway, the lawyer for Meredith Kircher, the murder victim, said that six years on, he remains convinced that uh, Amanda Knox and a former boyfriend are indeed guilty, that they were there on the night of the killing. Now, Alan, central to this retrial is the issue of important DNA evidence. What is that? Absolutely. The appeal court acquittal centred very largely on the issue of DNA evidence. That appeal court heard testimony from experts who trashed the performance of the Italian forensic police. They said there had been very poor practices involved in the collecting of samples and that samples had been used when there was a risk of contamination. This was samples of DNA of both the victim and Amanda Knox on a knife, uh, DNA from Raffaele Selecito, Amanda's boyfriend, on part of the bra strap of uh, the murder victim, but the experts told the appeal court that uh, there was a real risk that uh, the DNA had been contaminated, and the appeal court dismissed much of the DNA evidence, and that was central to the acquittal, but the Italian Supreme Court, very critical of the way the lower court had handled this central issue in the case. And as we hear the appeal being reheard, that DNA evidence will again be at the centre of any judgment.